practice has been going real good this week. Actually, we changed up the schedule a little bit. Um, haven't been doing any contact, trying to get our legs fresh and everything. Uh, I know we fly around tomorrow, though, but the practice schedule has been great. Coach Buck and I'm trying to make sure we're all uh, got our legs underneath us and flying around Saturday night or evening at one. So, so. Yes, Savion, definitely a pleasure to meet you. And you had a big, big game against the Vegas Vipers, 11 tackles. That actually is one of the most, the top seven in the league. Talk about your big game against the Vegas Vipers. It, it was pretty fun. And um, while I was in there, I didn't feel like it was a big game. You know, I was doing my job, you know, uh, going out there, doing what I'm supposed to do, making the plays I'm supposed to make uh, as a player while they brought me here, you know. so. Uh, just doing my part and along with my other defensive linemen and the linebackers fitting the gaps and uh, getting the blocks up off of me, you know, coming downhill, making the guards climb. I'm just making the plays I'm supposed to make. Savion, good to meet you. This is uh, Kyle Nash with the three-point conversion. Um, and I have to ask, this is the first time I've gotten to talk to you, so this is kind of a, a question that's been in, in waiting, but we hear from the offensive guys, you know, their opinion, all these rule changes and different things like that. What do you think about, you know, some of these rule changes that are unique to the XFL, the multiple conversion opportunities and the double forward pass and that stuff? What is that? What do you, what do you think of those, and how does that impact you as a defensive guy? Oh, that's pretty cool, and it and it, uh, it impacts the game like differently. Like, you know, at the end of the game this past week against Vegas, like we went for that fourth down, that uh, fourth and fifteen. Like, and actually, I was new to that. I didn't know what we we're doing. I'm like, bro, why are we still got the ball? And they're like, bro, I'm like, oh, I did not know that. You know, I don't play offense, so but it's pretty cool, like rules like that, and how the game is set up. Like, I like how the kickoff and kickoff return is set up. Uh, that's pretty cool to me. The five yard distance and they can't move to the ball is uh, kick. So it's a lot of different changes that I, actually I think benefit the players in the game, you know, in a sense. Yeah, and you come from a big background from Texas State. Talk about how that has helped you in the XFL. I, uh, it helped me, like, tremendously because, as y'all probably know, if y'all don't know, Texas State, we weren't the most winning this team, you know. So the most games I ever won in, my, uh, in the season – and my years there at Texas State was four. So I always had to learn. I always had the mentality to come back to work, uh, go back, look at the tape, be highly critical of myself, and go back and try to make plays the next week. Because in my head, I try, I try to make every play. Um, and it's never on nobody else. When I go back, first thing in the locker room, I think, what play should I have made or what play could I have made to change the game? Uh, that's how I think. And so I'm so built. I'm built for this moment right now, you know. Um, go back to work Saturday and try to win a game. Yeah, and to follow up though on that, you mentioned that you know your team struggled with the win department. What can you maybe tell the team and the fans that are kind of on the fence and still thinking about supporting this team to still support them? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of times in sports, uh, you know, a lot of teams get judged by the wins and losses, um, but that doesn't that doesn't determine how hard we work and prepare to go out there and play on Saturdays. I think a lot of people forget about that day. We prepare just as hard as the other team. The ball just didn't roll our way sometimes. Um, so I still encourage them to come out and support us because they're going to get another exciting, another fun game, high energy, and a highly competitive game Saturday, no matter what the record says. All right, Kevin. Go, go, Brian. Go, Brian. I'll wait. Sure. No worries, Jeff. Thanks. Kevin, <laughs> talk about how important seizing this XFL opportunity has been for you personally as a football player. Yeah, it's been great because uh, this is really my first year out. So I just turned 24. Uh, my last season was in 2021. I got picked up by the Colts uh, right after the draft. Got invited to Mickey, uh, mini camp, then veteran mini camp, and then earned my contract. They signed me. Uh, did the whole entire uh, training camp. Then got released at the end. It was a numbers game. They drafted two D tackles in front of me, and then what? Eight weeks later, uh, I got drafted here. So I'm just a young, hungry guy trying to make it. You know, um, in my mind, I ain't done nothing yet, and I'm far from where I want to be. So I'm blessed with this opportunity, really, man, to keep to keep proving myself right and other people wrong. Because I know I can play at the next level. And any level I step in the grass, I know I can compete with anybody. So. Hi, right, KB, I'm Jeff Barnes from Team BS Media. You guys, although the stat sheet doesn't say that you're impacting the pocket with the back-to-back uh, -back games without a sack, um, you 
the watch the film, you guys are impacting the pocket. You're getting there. You're just not getting home for the sacks. What do you think? What do you think you're having a, a problem finishing on those pass rushes? Yeah, that's like you said. You said a key word right there. Uh, finishing. Like uh, my coaching colleagues always tell me, the easy, easy, the easy part of getting a sack is beating the offensive of lineman. Just getting the quarterback down is the hard part. Um, because you know everything comes into play in that timing, how long he's patting the ball. Do we, do we lose you? Yeah, there, hey, you're you're back. I'm back. Y'all got me. Yeah, you're sideways again, but whatever. Well, man, I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. Hold on, let me see. Let me try to do some do something a little different right here. There we go. There we are. See, that's a, that's just did like we, a good defensive lineman up front able to think on his feet and get in front of it, man. I appreciate that, Savion. The technology <laughs> can be challenging at times. But um, listen, you mentioned earlier about, you know, going uh, going against expectations and trying to rise above expectations. I think that's fitting that attitude coming into this weekend. Uh, your Guardians will be hosting uh, what could arguably be the best offense in the league in the Seattle Sea Dragons. From your perspective as a defensive guy, especially up front, um, what what is what what goes into your kind of your mental preparation? Do you look forward to games like that? Do you put a little extra funk on what you're doing in your practices, or or what's it like preparing for such a game? Oh yeah, I love games like this, man. Uh, especially like you said, a great offense like this, a pretty solid offensive line. They work very well together um, in the run and in the pass. And the quarterback loves to scramble. He loves to get the ball out of his hand. So I think this is going to be really our first challenge up front on pass to kind of keep a guy in the pocket, you know, um, cause he can, he can, he can extend plays with his legs. He'll get out there on the perimeter and run around and then back up and then just try to complete the pass. So I think it's going to be big for us to keep him in the pocket, uh, have great rush lanes and help the back end. You know, we got to get to him. Like he said earlier, we had, just, we just haven't been finishing. I think this week we got to get to him. And if we get to him how we should, and I know we will win this game. And building on that, too, you talk about the quarterback having finesse. Um, then Ellison, their running back, is known to be a smash mouth guy, keeping it versatile. I mean, listen, I'm a big guy like you. How What's it like getting ready to, to battle a physical guy like that? Yeah, yeah, he uh, he's definitely going to be probably – who who else? I think uh, well, San Antonio had a big down here guy, a uh, big running back, that was north and south type of guy. Um, I think he's this type of guy, but he runs a little bit harder and a little more angry than uh, San Antonio running back did. So we got to we got to shut the engine off. We got to hit him down low. We can't let him. We can't let him get going. We got to turn him east and west. We can't let him go north and south. We, he he could definitely do some damage if you don't if you don't uh, make him go east and west. And you had a big tackle there for for a loss against Vegas. I definitely for this team we need more of that. What was it that you was able to do to make yourself? able to get that that far deep into the pocket and get him uh man uh i don't know like like when you get out there you get out there in the game you start getting a feel for the game you start getting a feel for the situation feel for the down um sometimes you could it's not predict but you can almost feel what's coming you, you know in certain situation times of the game i think that was one of those times where i kind of felt it was coming i just i stopped my gun i took a shot <laughs> Savion, we had uh, Quentin Dormady here yesterday, and he was talking about how important it was to extend drives on the offensive side of the ball to keep you guys off of the field. On the flip side of that, how much of a focus are you guys putting on big third down stops and, and shortening Danucci's drives this year, knowing how tough he is at quarterback and how he can make those throws? Yeah, we got to get off the field on third down. Uh, we, we're not doing horrible on third down this year, third down conversions, but – it's like the third downs that we need to have, we're not doing them. We're not getting off the grass. So uh, this past week, offense played a hell of a game. They played a great game, in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that happened in that game was on us because we should have got off the field. We had way too many long drives, way too many penalties and critical moments. That's our biggest thing is we we mess up in the most critical moments, you know. Uh, and those third downs, sometimes they come back to haunt you. Like a bunch of the drives, if you go back and watch, a bunch of the drives throughout this season on third down and we didn't get off the field, they go down the score. On third and 18, like uh, third and 15 against San Antonio, uh, we missed an out route over there. Um, missed, uh, got to a late. They caught it, got a first down. Then we go down. Then we get a, a penalty on the quarterback, a lady on the quarterback got a bounce on uh, and then on Jack. And the next thing you know, we go down, they go down to score. 
So I think we just got to learn how to get off in those critical moments uh, to help our offense and keep giving keep giving them opportunity to go score. One of the things you guys have struggled with the first five games is with teams getting the red zone, keeping them out the end zone. Um, how do you guys plan to address that these last five games? You you broke up on that last part. I got, oh, I'm sorry. I got you, you Savion. Uh, Jeff's every once in a while, Jeff's mic is a little off, but um, so he was just talking about struggles in the red zone and what you guys need to do to uh, to keep people out of the end zone. Uh, really, in the red zone, um, we got to get to the quarterback. Uh, that's really the biggest takeaway from that. Uh, as you see, um, what was it, a two point conversion this past week when we got to him and he was able to throw the ball away? But we got to get that before they score. We got to get we have to get to the quarterback in the red zone because nine times ten, a bunch of these, a bunch of these teams are scoring on us, passing them, running it in. So we got to get to the quarterback to help out the secondary to get off the grass and hold them the field goal. Now, one thing about this game is a little different than the last game that I was at, the home game that is, is that this game is an earlier game. Do you per personally prefer earlier games or a later game? Oh, I love early games. I like waking up and going to get it. Yeah, I don't like waiting all day to uh, go out there, man. It's too much time, too much to think about. You know, my nerves built up. I just want to go play ball. Like we gonna wake up, eat breakfast, hop on the bus, go play football. So that's what I love, man. On that thread, you know, given that you have a little bit of earlier start this time, one of the things that's been nailing you guys on the defensive line is uh, offsides penalties and just those mental mistakes that are inadvertently. Uh, you know, extending drives. So what are you guys working on mentally right now to keep your discipline and keep the motor run and stay aggressive, but not get penalized and extend a drive. And I think we lost him. There he is. Hey, Savion, you're on mute. There we go. There we go. Technology's great, isn't it? um <laughs> lord have mercy yes it is bp i think that was your question if you want to go ahead and, and ask it again sure yeah and that's also why i'm not on camera right now i don't need one more thing to break <laughs> but um going into the mental preparation and that, that earlier start um talking about penalties because you guys have been penalized you know several silly penalties really it's more penalties of aggression than anything else but what are you guys working on mentally this week to stay hungry keep that motor running but not get the dog on penalties that are going to keep you guys from getting off the field yeah uh, me personally i think pre-snap penalties i think that's all i can focus um you're not locked in you know like we're standing on the ball football can't be played until the ball is snapped um, so I think that's the biggest thing for me is just focus on your job, focus on what you got to do, um, and just do that when the ball is snapped because football can't be played until the ball is snapped. So I think that's the biggest thing is a lack of focus more than anything. Any pre-snap penalty is you're not focused. That's true. And a quick follow-up since uh, I'm the Seminole in the room. What's it like having all these Seminole coaches out there, especially the new addition, Devin Bush? What do you think he's going to bring to the table with his NFL experience? I love it. Anytime you can get a, a – a guy that played at the level you want to be at to come back and coach you, that's great. That's why that's why really why I came here. You know, this this coaching staff is full of ex NFL players that did it at the highest level and were actually great at their job. Like, you know, Ty Warren, it sucks that he just left, but he's one of the big reasons why I came here because I knew he had a lot. I knew he had a lot of knowledge to share and he wanted to do that. So I think it's great anytime you can get a guy that played where you want to play. So you can learn from him and pick his brain a little bit because can't too many people say they can't too many people had opportunities to say they were able to do that. So I think that's great. And I know, Savion, the, the goal is definitely to win this weekend. But what are your goals for the XFL and, and beyond? I know you, you got signed by the Colts. What are your goals longer term? You, you broke up. I can't hear you. Oh, that's right. I, I was saying I know the goal is to win the game this, this weekend. What are your goals long -term, term, Savion, going forward with your career? I just uh I just pray God allows me to keep being able to play football. Um I want to walk out of this game on my own two feet, uh achieving everything I want to achieve. Uh, I think we've got a connection issue again. Um 
fighting through it like a champ, though. I got to give Savion credit, man. He really is. He really is. Maybe this, this, that's a foreshadowing. So he's going to fight through all of this and he's going to sack Danucci like twice. <laughs> Watch him do it. You like the sound of that, Savion? Oh, yeah. I love that. I need it. I need it. <laughs> all right. We got time for a couple more here, guys. Sure. Uh, a really quick, Savion, I want to get in. You know, a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, one aspect that gets overlooked in the defensive front is for all the success that we've seen your linebackers, you know, have, whether it be T Plum, T Smith, whoever, um, a lot of that starts at defensive tackle position in the relationship with you guys and you holding block so he can do his job. Uh, what's, what's it been like, you know, working with him and getting that going? I mean, the Noler got his question in. I thought we'd get a little black and gold banneret representation talking about the UCF guy and how you work with him. No, nah, hey, I love playing in front of uh, TP and T Smith. Uh, they're too smart, too instinctive, too great linebackers. And I love playing in front of them. Um, and sometimes you got to sacrifice. Like my coach used to say, you got to sacrifice the body to go to fight the soul. Um, and that's what you got to do sometimes in the three tech. You got to know the double team's coming. You got to sit in there and let your linebacker run free. Because nine times a 10, he's a tackling machine, you know? And then so I, I'm just going to let him fly around and make plays. I'm going to do my job and I'll make the plays that I know I can make. The majority of the time, if I get sitting there and fight for my brother, I let him make that play. Because if, if I'm, if he win it, we all win it. So, come more if you got him, anybody? Yeah, KVI, I always ask the offensive players this, but our, def our defensive guys get to celebrate too. What is your sack dance, man? You you broke up again. My bad. I, I was saying, yeah, okay. oh, I got it. Andy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is with your mic sometimes, but um, so he was talking about celebrations and uh, sometimes the offensive guys get to celebrate. He was asking if you got a sack dance, anything uh, that, that you might want to do with bust out. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. I'm gonna be so turned. I might just be jumping everywhere. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I probably might just shift the crowd and point to my back of my jersey to let them know who, who I'm representing. Yeah, Savion, do you feel as if the Sea Dragons is the biggest challenge the Guardians have so far this year? Oh, I think overall as offense, oh, uh, yeah. Um, because you think about it, we play Houston, they're really one-dimensional. We knew they were going to pass the ball and they are going to try to pick us apart on the perimeter, um, which is what they did, you know, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, San Antonio, we knew they were going to run the ball. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that Dallas, we knew, or Arlington, they knew they are going to run the ball. Um, so it's kind of like this game, they're kind of decent at both. I think this is the first team we're actually going to play that's actually pretty good at both, both of the things they do. Uh, so it's going to – today, this, this Saturday, is going to let us know what kind of team we are. So we got to be ready. And I know I'm ready. And I know the defense is ready. But we, we're really locking in. Uh, coach is taking care of us. We're going to have fresh legs and fly around out there Saturday. All right. Anything else, guys? Just one quick one from me. Talk a little bit about the atmosphere at Camping World Stadium. What's it like playing in the city beautiful in front of these fans and knowing that some really good games have been played in that stadium and you just get to add to the legacy? Nah, it's pretty cool, man. It's a pretty big stadium. I actually uh, got to play in there. I played in the Tropical Bowl after my senior year. We played in the uh, Camping World Stadium uh, last year, in last January. So it's pretty cool. Like It came full circle. And the fan base, it's actually pretty nice out there. Like, I wasn't expecting so many people to show up um, this past home game, but they still showed out for us. So I, I, I really, we really do appreciate that because, you know, fans make a whole lot of difference in the game. Awesome. Savion, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Great and to meet you. Thank y'all. You're a fun Best guy. Best wishes. Thank y'all. Good luck. Best wishes.